Hi, and welcome to Animal Zone. I'm Arthur von Wiesenberger, and this handsome fellow is Mikey, my adopted pit bull. Animal Zone is the A to Z on everything about adoptable pets. Whether you're looking for a bird, a cat, a dog, or even a tortoise, we've got experts who can share their knowledge and insights. So cuddle up with your favorite critter and join us as we explore the Animal Zone. Wait, wait, wait. Good wait, wait, wait. Okay, very good. What a clever guy Mikey is. Hey there, welcome to Animal Zone. This week we're going up to Lompoc to visit Shadows Fun. And after that, we're going to the Santa Barbara Humane Society to learn all about animal behavior, like you. What do you think? I think it's gonna be fun. We'll be right back. Bonjour, Alex. Bonjour, Renaud. Happiness, it's great food prepared the French way. Chocolate eclair. What makes you happy? A touch of Paris. Without the trip to France. Handcrafted daily in our bakeries especially for you. Indulge yourself. Bon appétit. Please visit Renault's in Gelson, Santa Barbara, Long Beach, and La Cañada, Flint Ridge. The Santa Barbara Humane Society is an independent, local, community-based nonprofit with adoptable animals ready to find a forever home today. At the Santa Barbara Humane Society, we provide low-cost spay and neuter services and vaccinations. It's important for your dogs and cats to get vaccinated to prevent illnesses. And spay and neuter surgeries help prevent unwanted pregnancies and can benefit the health of your pet. At the Santa Barbara Humane Society, we want you to adopt, not chop. Today we're in Lompoc, California at Shadows Fun. Now this place is king for pit bulls because it's a pit bull rescue center. And we're gonna meet the founder and here she is, Jill Anderson Rackley of Shadows Fun. Thank you, Jill, for having us here today. Welcome, Mark, so glad that you're here. We were kind of connected because Jill has Mikey's uh, sister, right? Absolutely. So we kind of know each other from pit bulls. But it's kind of family. Yeah, I know. Right? Yeah. And you have a lot of pit bulls here, don't you? Yeah, we have uh, 23 at the moment. Wow. Yeah. And you know, I mean, pit bulls are such a misunderstood breed because I think people are sort of sometimes scared of them or they don't realize how sweet they are and what great hearts they have. Yeah, they really do. You know, one of the things I like to tell people is that if I sent out a press release saying my pit bull was a good dog today, it probably wouldn't get picked up. And so on any given day, you've got over a million pit bulls out there owned and loving families doing nothing but being good dogs. Uh, when they do something bad, unfortunately, it makes the news and uh, that's why they get a bad reputation. Now, where do most of your pit bulls come from? Um, most of them come from our local shelters and um, a handful come from owner surrenders. Uh, but primarily, um, you know, we started Shadows Fund to take the dogs that tend to get passed over for adoption time and again. Mm. Um, and those tend to be the pit bulls, uh, the senior dogs. Um, and so we wanted to be a place where that dog has a chance, right. or, or a second chance, I should say. Um, and so our facility here, while we don't have the space and the resources and the funding and the staff to do a high volume public intake shelter, um, we can focus on quality. So that dog who's maybe stressed out in his kennel at the shelter or didn't get adopted, um, they come here and they can have something that's really darn close to a home until they find a home of their own. And do you find you have a lot of uh, volunteers who foster uh, the pit bulls at their homes as well? Uh, you know, not as much. And I'll tell you the reason. Um, with pit bulls, fostering is almost as tough for us as adoption, and, and largely because of the rental challenges. Um, mm. And so in California, there's tons of people that want to have these dogs and can't because they can't find a rental uh, a house that will allow them to have a large breed dog or in some cases are breed restrictions. Mm -hmm. um, and so we needed to set up a facility because fostering and adoption is so hard for these dogs in our local area. Um, a facility that wasn't kennel based, a facility that feels like home so that until they find that home, 
they have something really close to that. And if you'd like to see it, I'd be happy to take you into one of our dog's little studios. Let's take a look at a okay, studio. I want to check see, it out. Let's yeah. go see where Gotti lives. We're going right. to meet Gotti and see his place. All right, lucky Gotti. <laughs> <laughs> so Gotti, we're here in your suite, and it's a beautiful suite here. Uh, tell me a little bit about Gotti. Where did he come from? Gotti came from Santa Barbara, and he is a dog who um, uh, is a lifetime resident at the sanctuary. Um, he lived in an apartment and had a habit of um, getting out when the kids would leave the door open. And the community just, I think, sort of got tired of seeing him out and about all the time. And, um, so he got picked up by animal control more than once. He was a little lawbreaker. And, um, you know, they, they decided that he needed to live his life at a sanctuary. And so Gotti's here with us where he is not a lawbreaker anymore. That's in his past. Mm -hmm. um, he's just being a comfortable old man. But how, old, how old is he? Gotti's probably 13 or 14 years old. So that's pretty old for a pit bull, isn't it? It's pretty old. And, um, you know, because we take in dogs like Gotti that, you know, kind of need a second chance or that, you know, didn't succeed in their adoption um, or didn't do well in a traditional shelter setting, we really needed to find a way to make them, to make their life comfortable and feel like a home. And mm -hmm. um, so we decided to not do kennels here. We do little doggy suites, which is what we're sitting in. Um, so all the dogs have a sofa to sit on where they can host guests um, to watch TV. Uh, their floors are heated, so in the winter when it gets cooler, their, their rooms stay cozy and warm at night. Um, and he's, <laughs> he's going to walk around his room. But, you know, and then they have 30-foot runs off the back, so if they want to go socialize with their neighbors, they can. And if they'd rather stay in here and snore, which is what Gotti usually does, they can do that too. It's just really important to us to give the dogs a sense of comfort and home and um, to live their life that way here. It's a pretty great thing. Now, does he get on with the other dogs too? He's uh, what we call indifferent. And so he's he's dog tolerant. He will wow. tolerate dogs and ignore them, but he doesn't have an interest in playing with them. He just uh, really wants to go for his walk, uh, chew on his bone, see his favorite volunteers, and then nap. That's sort of what Gotti likes to do. In not a, a bad life. It's not a bad not life. Not at and, all. You know, every dog here gets to do we, we sort of accept the dogs on their terms. And now, now I noticed earlier um, you had some uh, a volunteer working with a bunch of dogs in, in, a, in a corral. Yeah. Oh, tell me about that. So that was what we call a play group. And uh, a few years ago, we had uh, the group Dogs Playing for Life, which was founded by Amy Sadler, come out and train us in how to run safe play groups. And I said it then and I say it now, it's, it was a game changer and the best thing that ever happened to us and I think to shelters. Uh, nationwide. So Dogs Playing for Life trains shelter and uh, shelter staff and volunteers in how to safely identify dogs who will be compatible in the way that they play. And it's really important because generally in a shelter setting dogs are isolated. They're in a kennel, they're waiting to be adopted, um, but that's not a natural lifestyle and they don't get to express those behaviors that are normal for a dog to express the way they wrestle and play with other dogs. Yeah, um, I mean they're pack animals. They're pack they? animals and they need to socialize not only with us but with members of their own species and so running play groups here where dogs get to socialize with other dogs and uh, express those kinds of behaviors they want to express is part of a really important uh, part of their daily enrichment and, and letting our dogs be dogs. Yeah, and it looked like they were having a great time, like playing tug of war or whatever that was with that long thing. I mean, that was great. They, they were having a great time and, uh, you know, we, <laughs> we, we enjoy watching them so much. We started our own little sort of drama around it that we call Tire Town because there's big tires out there they climb on and there's a mayor of Tire Town and there's a sheriff because some dogs play that role. You know, there's a dog that wants to police all the other dogs play and that's the sheriff of Tire Town. And, um, you know, it's it, it, just watching them do that and seeing the uh, the ways in which the dogs um, interact is is great for us, but also teaches us a lot about canine behavior at the same time. Yeah. So for someone who's thinking about adopting a pit bull, what are some of the advice that you'd give them before they go out and get one? Besides the fact that, uh, you know, some places aren't going to allow you to have a pit bull yeah. in there. Outside of the rental challenges, I think my advice would be, uh, to be honest, real similar for a pit bull than it would be for any other dog. Um, you know, adoption is a, a commitment to a living being. Um, you're taking the responsibility to make that animal happy and fulfilled and they have needs that need to be met every day. Um, and, and I think what I would say to folks is make sure that you've uh, really thought out um, what a dog needs, that mm -hmm. you have time to meet those needs because 
the behavioral challenges we see in dogs aren't so much breed specific as they are uh, they're not having their needs met perhaps or they haven't been socialized or they're not getting enough exercise or um, they maybe had a rough start in life and that wasn't recognized and so I think what I would say to folks is um, you know make sure you're ready to engage in an active relationship with your dog every day and meet their needs they're good with kids aren't they um, in general, um, I mean, they used to be nanny dogs. They, they were known as the known. nanny dogs, and what we find with our dogs who get adopted into homes with kids is they, they tend to naturally fall into that role of wanting to look after the kids and, and sort of make sure you know they know where they're at at all times and be by their side. So yeah, the American Staffordshire Terrier and the English Staffordshire Terrier were originally known as nanny dogs. Well, they sure are loving. This one is just adorable. What yeah, a sweet guy. Really sweet. You know, it's it's um, we we know a lot of folks who adopted their first pit bull from us and then later their second and their third and and we like to say you know it's kind of like a tattoo. Once you get one, you're going to get another one and you'll probably never go back. There's just something about the way this breed connects to humans mm -hmm. that people fall hopelessly in love with. That's true. I, I, I'm, I'm right there with you. Um, I also noticed that you have beyond pit bulls, you've got some other animals too. We do. So we have a hundred acres and um, you know that's enough space to to bring some large animals in and we wanted to make the sanctuary, oh, make yourself comfortable buddy, <laughs> we wanted to make the sanctuary available to other animals in need as well. So we have pigs and we have horses and we have one sheep. Wow. And a big pig, as I recall, right? That's some Our really pigs big pigs. are seven, eight hundred pounds. That's a lot of pig. Yeah, it's a lot of pig. Wow. And you're going to be doing a pig pancake coming up? We're starting an event next year called Pancakes with Pigs. And it's going to be an event for the community who would like to see the sanctuary. They can come out, have pancakes, meet the dogs, pet a pig, go on a hayride. Wow. People want to know more about Shadow Fun. You've got a website, right? Shadowsfun.org. Shadowsfun.org. That's great. So what a pleasure to be here today, and thank you for uh, thank you. letting us in and introducing us to these wonderful creatures. I just love uh, what you're doing. Thank you for coming and meeting them. It's really, really great. appreciate it. All righty, well, I guess we've got to take a break, but uh, when we come back, we've got much more Animal Zone. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey, take a look at these loving animals that you can adopt today. And don't worry, if someone beats you to the shelter, there are plenty more wonderful animals ready to find you and their forever home. Every morning, you could count on it being there with the rise of the sun. We're proud to say we've been there every day with you. The Santa Barbara News Press plans to continue sharing the news of the day with you all through the year and beyond. It's nice to know there are some things you can still count on. The Santa Barbara News Press, serving Santa Barbara since 1855. Subscribe today. Call 1-800-654-3292. And today we're at the Santa Barbara Humane Society with the Executive Director, Carrie Burns, and a beautiful new addition, Lark. Oh, thank you, Lark. <laughs> Tell me about this gorgeous dog. Oh my gosh. So the last time we talked, I had another foster, Justin. And Justin has found a new girlfriend. Wow. Yes, he is. so he's being fostered in a new home. I'm so excited for him. He's going out to art shows and different things with her, so he's just living it up. Hmm. So I decided to foster Lark. Lark came to us from an overcrowded shelter. Hi, baby. <laughs> and she is one of the sweetest, you know, the big bully breeds kind of get a bad rap. And she can just loves to be hugged and kissed and laid on and everything else. She doesn't bark. Wow. No, instead, she gets really happy. She actually smiles and she has a little split in her front teeth. Her butt starts wiggling and she does what a lot of bully breeds will do sometimes. Instead of barking, they go, Rrr! and people think they're growling, uh -huh. but it's a really happy noise. And she does that constantly when I take her home and when she's in my office. But she is available for adoption. So don't overlook an animal just because they're a bully breed or because you think it might be something. Each animal is very different, so ask questions about them. But now, when you uh, foster a, a dog, what is involved with fostering? It depends on, on what you're fostering for. Um, sometimes you can foster because maybe they're not adjusting well in the shelter. 
Um, Lark was really shut down and really nervous and so I wanted to see what her personality was like. So because she was shut down we said let's put her in foster and see if her behavior is different and it was. Um, sometimes you can foster for a medical need. If we have an animal that's sick for some reason or needs special care at home then you can foster for that. So for the Santa Barbara Humane Society we have people that want to foster and we walk them through either the medical needs of the animal and tell them how long they'll be fostering or the behavior needs and how they can help us to bring out that personality or curb that negative behavior maybe um, at home because it's easier to work one-on-one -on -one in a quiet environment as opposed to a shelter. So people can just give us a call and say, I saw this dog, may I foster? And we can talk to them about it. And it's a pretty simple process. And we pay for all the medical needs and all the food and everything while you're fostering. Now you hear this expression of foster failure. What does that mean? <laughs> well, that would be me if you want to call it that. Um, I call it a foster success. Uh. A lot of people, they foster a dog, they find out more about the animal, the personality just comes out and you find that it's a true fit for your family and you end up adopting. So it's a win-win, And win, it's a win-win it? all the way around. Uh -huh. So we like to shift that term to a foster success instead of a foster failure. But our foster families, our foster parents are huge for these animals and for our organization. For any nonprofit, you know, fostering in any way with the animals is just huge. Now you mentioned there's this 333. What does that mean? Right, so we have a term, it's 333. And you know, when people walk into shelters, sometimes they'll see animals in the back of their kennel or off to the side, they don't want to get near you. And people need to realize that a shelter environment's very different from a home environment. So we say normally it takes, if you take an animal home, it takes three days to decompress for the animal. It takes three weeks for them to get to know your routine because we all have different routines. And then it takes about three months for them to really feel at home. Oh. So we expect an animal to go home and be perfect. Sit, shake, do all the perfect stuff. Right. Well, it's like us going into a brand new work environment. You have to learn the routine. You have to understand what's going on before you actually feel comfortable and get going. So give it that three, three, three. Three days to decompress, three weeks for them to get to know your routine, and three months to really feel at home. So be patient with any new animal that comes into your home because we would want patience for ourselves and we need to understand this relationship that's going on in our new home. So it's basically four months. It is. More or less. Yeah. Or in months. dog years, 28 no. months. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which is a long time for you guys. It Gosh. is. It is. Now you've, but... you've reached some amazing milestones here at the Santa Barbara Humane oh. Society. Can you tell us what's happened since I... uh, this past year? So Arthur, let me remind you, I started just less than two years ago and this is now December 2019 and this last year alone we finally hit our 1,000th adoption. My gosh. But here's the best part. If you combine the adoptions for 2016, 2017, and 2018, we still exceeded that number. In this past year? In just one year, in wow. less than a year, because it's just December of 2019. We still have a few weeks to go. Wow. So we can, we'll have even more adoptions. These guys deserve to get into their new home and I could not be more proud. And I think some of that is attributed to you and Animal Zone and people watching because they get to see more about the animals and learn more about the animals. And we want people to learn. This is great success. What, what, what's the future uh, for the coming year for uh, the Santa Barbara Humane Society? What do, you, what do you hope to see and achieve? Well, obviously we want to beat this year's numbers with adoptions, but we also don't want to just push numbers. This is about making the right match, the right family, the right home with every animal. And you know, whether that means getting people into training classes that we offer or you know, talk to them about some medical needs, we want to just continually give the community what they need for the animals that they have or want to have in their lives. So beating our adoption goals again next year would be amazing. Um, we've already exceeded our goals for our spay neuters for the year because we want to not have more inter animals entering a shelter, you know, obviously of puppies and kittens, because then we'll constantly be so filled with the animals. And there's a lot of senior 
dogs that are, you know, she's kind of considered senior. She's about five years old, you know, or two, three, or even eight-year-old animals that need homes. Mm -hmm. So spaying and neutering can help to reduce that overpopulation, reduce animals coming into a shelter. And so we blew our numbers away in that. People are coming here to get their vaccinations done. You know, people are coming here for training classes. We are finally becoming that resource for the community and their animals' needs. And I'm just, to expand that more next year is just gonna be amazing. It's great to see the vision that you have and that the board here at the Santa Barbara Humane Society coming into fruition. And uh, it's great to see Lark may be finding a forever home any minute now, maybe right after this break. So I hope so. <laughs> we're gonna take a break. We'll be right back here on Animal Zone. Stay tuned. Hey, take a look at these loving animals that you can adopt today. And don't worry, if someone beats you to the shelter, there are plenty more wonderful animals ready to find you and their forever home. Care for Paws was started in 2009 with the goal to reduce pet overpopulation and keep animals out of shelters and also to ensure that pets can stay with their owners for life. We from the get-go established a free spay and neuter program that would help low-income pet owners fix their pets. So we provide shots, microchips, dewormer, flea treatment. We also have a veterinary intervention program. It's a way for us to help improve the quality of life for the animal as well for the owner. Because when an animal suffers in the family, so does the rest of the family. Today we're here at the Santa Barbara Humane Society with the Executive Director, Carrie Burns, again. Good to see you, Carrie. Hey, Arthur. How are you? I am feeling so good because I feel like I'm going to be taught how to be a good behaviorist around dogs. Everyone should be taught that, for sure. We need to know how, we need to understand dog behavior yeah. and how they react in a home, especially after being adopted. Right, because when they're in a shelter, it's one way of thinking, but when they're home, it's a different, isn't it? Right, I mean, think about a shelter environment. For anybody that's walked in, it's usually barky and noisy and all kinds of stuff going on. I personally wouldn't want to be in that environment if I was a dog, because that's a lot of stimulation. And usually homes are very different. So we have to think about if we're walking in to adopt from a shelter that's one environment and mm -hmm. a home's a different environment, how do we transition that animal and how can you help for that transition because we expect animals to be perfect. We're the drive-through society. Go through and get a coffee, go through and get a meal. You know, we expect them just to go through the, you know, get a the dog. adoption agency, get a dog, it'll be perfect. Yeah. But there is there's a there is work to do. There's and steps. we need to understand that and we need patience mm. um, for ourselves and for the animals. And so there's a lot of things that we can do. And luckily, we've got the staff on hand to help with that. Well, I see someone walking our way, which has got a beautiful little pup. This her hands. is Erica Jackson. She's one of our staff members, and this is Oak. And Erica works in our behavior and training department, and she has her degree in animal sciences. So we hire the people who have the expertise to know how to help you during your transition periods. You want to tell us a little okay. bit about uh, the transition and how to help people? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So. The hardest part is when you take your pet home and you guys don't really know each other yet, right? They don't know you very well, you don't know them very well, but the best way to help the transition go smoothly and easily is to establish a routine. Dogs are huge creatures of habit. They love a predictable day. The more predictable, the less scary it is. So the more you can do things similarly at the same time every day, the happier they're gonna be, definitely. Now I have, a, for example, I've got an adopted dog, Mikey, and when I take Mikey out for a walk, his dream is to sniff every inch of the ground as we of go course, for a walk. Of course, hey, What should be an hour walk is like two and a half hours <laughs> because of all the sniffing. Yeah. Is that good or bad? Is there a point where you say, basta cozy, enough? You know, it kind of depends. I know some people that are like, you know, I'm out to walk my dog and we're walking and we're, you know, getting exercise. but. I think that there's a good balance. You do a little bit of both. You let them sniff because dogs love to smell, right? Yeah. They love to wander and explore and see what who was there before them. And so I think letting them sniff and spending the time doing that, it works their mind. Yeah. And you're working their body too by taking them out on a walk. So when you first get a dog like Oak and Oak wants to sniff all the time, is it okay to let them just do that when you first get the dog because it builds their confidence and understands yeah, your routine? Absolutely. And then maybe pull back later? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think okay. that once they get to know you and you guys are more comfortable with each other, that's when you can 
do things like, okay, come on, let's go. You know, it's time to time to keep moving. What about food in general? I mean, you know, there's so many options when you go to the pet store. There's, you know, canned food, there's dry food, there's kibbles, there's uh, now refrigerated food that's sure, fresh. Yeah. And then I know a lot of people who actually just cook for their dog, which is a lucky dog. I mean, one person said, oh, I go and buy, you know, these big things of chicken and I boil the chicken and, you know, it's cheaper than buying dog food and it's putting my hand into it a bit. I would suggest with that two things. One, talk to your veterinarian because certain dogs need certain you know, nutrients in their body. So don't just assume that we can make dogs go vegan if we're vegan. Two, be consistent with your food. So when we adopt out animals here, you know, Erica makes sure that they go home with their bag of food, both wet and dry, because that's what we feed is a mixture of the same brand of food. Mm -hmm. And we actually use Purina here. So you don't wanna go home and then give them a whole bunch of like, some weird food because yeah. then they're going to have diarrhea and then you're going to call the vet and go, oh my gosh, my dog is sick, it has diarrhea. Well, it's like us eating some weird food that we're not used to. Mm -hmm. You need to be consistent with the food and our staff, you know, like Erica can tell you, if you're going to get new food, let's start with a quarter mixture of the new food for a few days, then a half a mixture of the new food. You can transition off in about a week to new food. So, so dogs don't get bored with the same meal day in and day out? Oh, I think we think they do, yeah. um, but not necessarily. And there are healthy treats you can give them. Green beans, you know, pumpkin. Yeah. Now there's certain things you can't give dogs, right? Definitely. What are the, what are the big no's? Um, chocolate. chocolate. Oh, my favorite, I'll have that. Um, avocado. Yeah. Really, they can't eat avocado. Yeah. Especially wow. the seeds. I know they get really yeah. fat if they eat a lot of avocados. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Why, <laughs> but I love them. Me too. And things like chicken bones that people like to give to their dogs can splinter and then it can get stuck places. So um, there's a lot of good research out there about what is a healthy alternative to add to your dog's kibble. And then finally, if you want to have your dog really well trained, is it a good idea to go to a trainer or bring in someone who does that? We have some fabulous group training classes here at the Humane Society. It's great for building your dog's confidence. It's great for getting basic obedience. It's great for bonding. Um, it's definitely something that we recommend you do in ad adopting a new animal. And you don't have to adopt from here to go through our training classes. Oh. You can bring any animal, well, you can bring any dog, <laughs> no, no chickens, um, <laughs> to our dog training classes. We even have a reactive rover class. Oh, he likes you. He oh, does. Oh, do you want to come He's home? He's loving this attention. <laughs> what I love about our training classes is day one, everyone wants to bring their dogs. Yeah. Day one is no dogs allowed. It's how to train the human. Mm -hmm. and Which is the most important part. It is, because yeah. it, it, but it's a great series that we have here. So look on our website. Um, at www.sbhumanesociety.org. Sign up for our training classes. Mm -hmm. Or any questions about stuff, we're happy to help you out. Fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah. Carrie and Erica, thank you so much. Oh, thank, thank you. you so much. Yes, and uh, We're going to take a, a little break. I'm going to take this little dog, and I'll be back sometime. Bye. We're going away. <laughs> <laughs>
town So glad you're my best friend Through thick and thin We'll see things through Canine of mine, so true Did I find you or did you find me? Either way, it's still serendipity When I saw you, it was plain to see You weren't just another lassie Wanna be your canine of mine Friend for all time I'm so glad you're my best friend